welcome to my channel be yourself this is dr rajin sharma and today i'm going to deal with the second part of the cell cycle regulation and the first part i have discussed how maturation promoting factor was discovered which include cdk and cyclin and uh, there are different types of cdk and cyclins in both yeast and animals which i already have discussed and the increase and decrease in the level of different types of cyclins in case of animals i have plotted the graph for that now this time i will discuss about some regulatory points including uh, at different stages how growth factors how different cdks and cyclin are involved from required for the passes of one phase of the cell cycle to the other and how if there is damage chain is and how that get regulated and also the spinal fiber assembly regulation so let's start before dealing with something else i will like to introduce with the cdk inhibitors there are two class of uh, cdk inhibitors one is the ink4 family which include p15 16 18 and 19 this inhibit cyclin uh, sorry cdk4 and cdk6 and arrest at g1 phase another family is the cap or cap family which include p21 p27 and p57 this inhibit at different stages uh, one at the cdk1 cyclin a which arrest at the g2 phase cyclin 1 sorry cdk1 and cyclin b which lead to the arrest at g2 to 1 front amp phase other is the cdk2 uh, cyclin a complex which lead to the arrest at s phase and finally cdk2 cyclin e which arrest at the g1 phase i am discussing with the first phase of the cell cycle which is the g1 i have discussed that first thing which require in the cell to initiate the division is there uh, is the requirement of the nutrition if they if they have the proper growth factors and proper conditions then it will initiate or it will pass out the first restriction point at the g1 phase in the cell cycle so if growth factors are available then with the help of signaling molecules which are ras graf ark and mak it will lead to the synthesis of cyclin d1 and once cyclin d1 is synthesized then cell will able to pass from g1 to s phase but if these are absent then it will enter into the g1 g0 phase which is known as cell arrest phase and it will remain till the required condition will not again be there now second point is that since cyclin d1 is a critical target of the growth factor signaling it might be expected that defect in cyclin d1 regulation contribute to the development of human cancers including lymphomas and breast cancers another point is that as it is involved with the growth regulator and another fact which is the rb retinoblastoma it is involved in the cancer cell inhibitions in it is if it is unphosphorylated then it will bind to the e2f which is the elongation promoting factor and since it will halt the transcription but when it passes once passes from cell passes from g1 restriction point then it get phosphorylated with the help of cdk4 6 cyclin d in the g1 phase and then it will unable to bind with the a2f which then help in the regulation of cell cycle by uh, inducing transcription another point is that for the entry from the g1 to s phase there is a requirement of uh, decrease concentration of p27 once i have discussed growth factor second is the rb and third is the p27 now in case of early g1 phase p27 get bonded with the cyclin e and cdk2 complex uh, cdk2 complex but with the advance of the g g1 phase and once it get checked with all the requirements available then the uh, signaling molecules ras traf amk ark and p3 kinase and akt will decrease the concentration of p27 
and in this decreased concentration it will bind to the cyclin D CDK46 complex which is in the G1 phase and once it gets bound with this complex it will prevent the rebinding with the cyclin E and CDK2. After the complete activation of cyclin E CDK2 it will phosphorylate the P27 and it will be completely degraded. Now it is able to cross the G1 to S phase. CDK2 also phosphorylates RB completing its inactivation of P27. CDK2 cycling E complex then initiate S phase by activating the MCM helicase from proteins at replication origins leading to the initiation of DNA synthesis. MCM helicase. I already have discussed about this in my first part of the cell cycle regulation that how this complex have to prevent the, uh, the, uh, the DNA replication, twice replication of DNA. It regulates once replication in four cell cycle and since prevent the cancerous formation of cell. Uh, now, once it has entered from G1 to S phase, there will be the replication of DNA. But if once the replication is completed, then there will be another checkpoint. It will decide whether the DNA is complete for the separation into the two or the distribution into the two daughter cells. At that point, it will check whether there is break or not, or whether it is correctly replicated or not. But when there will be double strand break in the DNA, then ETM will activate it and it will activate HK2 by phosphorylating it. It then activates CDC25A and it will lead to the arrest at G1 and S phase. But when there will be single stranded or unreplicated DNA, then instead of ATM, there will be the activation of ATR. And this time, instead of CHK2, it will activate CHK1 by phosphorylating it and CTC25C, not A, which was in the case of double standard break. And this will lead to arrest at G2 and G2 phase. Another point is that in the G1 phase, there is another checkpoint which is P53. It also regulates the cell cycle. If you will remember my last video of uh, apoptosis, if you have not, seen, not so, uh, shown that, then I have given the link in my description. You, have, uh, you can get it from there. So it also involves in the cell cycle regulation. It also checks whether the condition is proper or not. If not, then it will either uh, leads to the stoppage or the arrest at the certain point or if there will be some major defect then it will initiate the apoptosis. Then how it function? In the case of double stand break I already discussed that ATM will be activated and it will activate CHK2 which will, which will uh, initiate or activate P53 activity and this will lead to the activation of P21 transcription leading to inhibition of CDK2 cycling E complex and cell cycle get arrest at G1 phase. Now once it has crossed from the G1 to S, S to G2, then in the M phase also it will check whether the chromosomes is properly aligned or not, whether it is suitable for the proper distribution into the two daughter cells equally. So after the proper alignment of the cell, what will happen? Uh, in there will be the role of CDK1 cyclin B. What it do? There are various functions. First function is that it help in the chromatin condensation. It condenses it by phosphorylation of condensin. Second point is that it will lead to the breakage of nuclear envelope by phosphorylation of lanins, nuclear pore complexes, and inner nuclear membrane proteins. Third point is that it will lead to the fragmentation of Kolge apparatus by phosphorylation of Kolge matrix proteins. Another is that it will lead to the spindle formation by phosphorylation of chromosomes and microtubule associated proteins. And uh, after uh, that, it will check in all this process, it check out the proper condition for the cell cycle uh, progression. 
before proceeding to the M phase, I will discuss some more point is that until G2 phase, these chromosomes get attached with one another with the help of protein known as cohesion. Once it gets uh, migrated into the M phase and enters into the prophase, the cohesion can dissolve except at the site of centros centromere. And instead of that, there is another protein called uh, condensin which helps in the condensation of chromosomes and which is required during the mitosis process. This condensing proteins help in the condensation of chromosomes. It gets condensed and now in this metaphase we will able to visualize the chromosomes under microscope. Uh, once the spinal fiber has formed, in the case of uh, and it, when it progresses to the anaphase, then it is mediated by the anaphase promoting factor APC, which is the ubiquitin ligase. The unattached kinetochores. This unattached kinetochores get bond with the mud and mad. And in, when it get bond with the mud and mad, the mad get activated and it will lead to the inactivation of CDC20, which detached the APC, which is the anaphase promoting complex. And in this condition, anaphase promoting complex get inactivated. But when the kinetochores get attached with the spandle fiber, then CDC20 now is activated and, and the APC, which is the anaphase promoting complex, will be able to carry out its function. How it function? It function in two ways. The first thing is that uh, once all the chromosomes get aligned on the spindle, the mad and mud complex dissociate and after the activation of CDC20 and leading to the activation of APC activation, APC ubiquitinized cycline B or uh, we can say that it degrade it, degrade it and lead to the active inactivation of CDK1. Another way is that it uh, ub uh, ubiquitinates securing and once securing is get uh, uh, degraded it will lead to the activation of separase and now it leads to the complete dissolution of uh, this uh, this cohesion protein from the two sister chromatids and now they are able to move from the two opposite poles and after that cytokinesis, cytokinesis will progress and lead to the cells the completion of the cell cycle having two daughter cells with equal number of chromosomes this is how in each and every stages uh, cell cycle get regulated it is very highly regulated process and once it get uh, uh, misled, uh, then it will lead to the cancer or some other serious diseases and uh, some genetic disease can also be there. After time I have discussed that if this will not be happen, then cancer will take place. If this will not will happen, then cancer will take place. And what is actually cancer is? This will be in my upcoming video. So don't forget to subscribe and share my channel. Be yourself for my upcoming videos. Till then, goodbye and have a nice day and be yourself.